This is why you should never go on a subway again. So what happened is that one night, a teenage girl was taking the subway home from work back to her house in New York. Scary part is when she went on board, she sat directly across from two men with a woman sitting in the middle. The creepy part is that the woman kept staring at her and wouldn't even blink while the two men never once looked at her. Well, at the next stop, a man with a trench coat walked in, but the girl didn't pay much attention to him. The girl kept trying to look away so that one lady wouldn't stare at her, but she just kept looking, wouldn't even blink. Well, at the next stop, that random man with a trench coat pulled out the teenage girl and dragged her out of the subway. She was screaming, asking for help because she had no idea why this guy just pulled her out. But the guy told her to calm down and said he actually saved her life because the woman that was staring at her was actually dead. And the two men next to her were holding her up to make her look alive. The random guy with the trench coat said if he didn't pull her out, she was going to be their next victim. One day, me and my friends were talking about one of our friends' birthday parties coming up. We are going to call her Brooke. So all of my friends were invited to the birthday party. And the day before Brooke's birthday party, she sent me the address. I showed up to the address, but the house was very creepy and old. This was when I was younger, and I thought, oh, maybe they just forgot to decorate. So I casually just walked inside, and I saw that there were spider webs and dirt all over the place. I started shouting, is anyone there? Is anyone there? And then I heard some footsteps. Until a light turned on, and I see an old man right in front of me. I asked, do you know where Brooke is? And he said, if you don't leave now, I'll throw you out myself. I ran out and got into the car. It turns out that Brooke didn't want me at her birthday party, so she gave me the wrong address on purpose. Once there was a group of girls who heard about the game Baby Blue. They didn't believe in it, but thought they could scare their friend Laura. So they sent Laura into a bathroom by herself. She turned off the lights, closed the door, and put her arms out as if to hold a baby. Then started chanting Baby Blue, Baby Blue 13 times. What happened next cannot be explained. Laura felt a heavy weight in her arms. Then she felt the weight in her arms scratching her. She was terrified and didn't know what to do. She wanted to drop it, but she was afraid of what might happen if she did. So she froze, and the weight grew heavier and heavier. Suddenly, she saw a woman in the bathroom mirror with a twisted look on her face. She screamed in terror. When her friends heard her scream, they tried to open the door, but it was locked. When they finally opened the door, they found Laura on the floor. Her eyes had been scratched out. They tried to move her body, but they couldn't, because something large and invisible was pinning her to the ground terrifying urban legends from around the world. Once there were three teenagers who broke into an abandoned amusement park in Canada. Two of them went inside first while the third waited outside. But after a while, the two who went inside first still hadn't come out. So the one left waiting decided to go inside as well to find his friends. That's when he found one of his missing friend's phones lying on the ground. And in the camera roll, he saw something terrifying. On his friend's phone, he saw a photo of a strange door with a huge mouth inside. That turned out to be the urban legend of the Smile Room, a giant creature that manifests itself as a fake room with a door to lure its victims in. It can move to different locations and disguise itself as a normal looking door. So once you walk in, it'll devour you. So remember, the next time you see a door in an unusual place, don't go near it. This is why 3 a.m. is so scary. I know everybody knows that 3 a.m. is a scary time. You always see it in scary movies, but have you ever wondered why? It's because 3 a.m. is known as the devil's hour. It is said that during this hour, the veil between our world and the paranormal world is at its thinnest, meaning that ghosts and demons have a much easier time coming to our world at that time. So if you're ever awake at 3 a.m. and you hear a noise in your house, you better get to your room and lock the door. If you ever want to own a pet, don't do what she did. Once there was a girl named Kylie who went to Mexico on a family vacation, but one day she got bored and wandered away from her hotel. That's when she saw a small black dog on the street. She could have never expected this would lead to something horrifying. Kylie walked up to the dog and picked it up. It started licking her face and immediately was very friendly. Since it didn't have a collar and no one was around it, she decided to adopt it, but this would be a horrible mistake. Soon her vacation ended and Kylie put this little dog under her sweater to hide it on the way home. But as soon as they arrived, the dog started acting strange. It chewed a hole through the wall and the next morning Kylie woke up to it gnawing on her ear. She thought it must be sick so she took it to the vet and that's when she finally found out the truth. Kylie said there's something wrong with my dog. I don't know what breed it is but I adopted it in Mexico. The vet looked confused then shook his head. That's not a dog. It's actually a giant sewer rat and it has rabies. This story is why you should never mess with the Ouija boards. 
We moved into my dad's girlfriend's house where one of her daughters lived upstairs, my brother lived upstairs, her other daughter lived down in the basement along with me who lived in a makeshift room in the basement. One night, me and her two daughters decided to buy an Ouija board. After my dad and his girlfriend went to bed, me and her daughters all went downstairs, grabbed a bunch of candles, set up the Ouija board, and grabbed a bunch of our great-grandparents' stuff. We wanted to see if any of our great-grandparents would talk to us. We were so excited because the Ouija board was working and things were moving it. We asked what the spirit's name was, expecting it to be one of our great-grandparents, but it said its name was Tick. T-I-C. We asked it to repeat it again and it spelled out T-I-C. We knew that it wasn't one of our great-grandparents. Stay tuned for part two. This is part two of why you should never do an Ouija board. So after it said its name was Tick, we asked how old it was. The spirit responded with nine years old. We asked what gender it was. There was no response. We knew for sure at this point we were not talking to one of our great-grandparents. I wanted to stop right then and there. I was really freaked out and I knew that we weren't talking to something good, but my older stepsister wanted to keep going. So out of peer pressure, of course, I kept going. She asked if it was human. Its response was no. We asked if we were safe. The spirit said yes, but I really didn't feel safe. We asked if the spirit was stuck in the house. The response was yes. The next thing my older stepsister asked, which I really wish she didn't, is if Tick was the only one there with us. The response was no. 60 seconds is not enough time for the story and the story is really long, so stay tuned for part three. This is part three to the Ouija board story and why you should never use an Ouija board. So my older stepsister asked if Tick was the only one there with us. The answer was no. She asked if all the spirits there with us were good spirits. The Ouija board said no. Right as we asked that, the bathroom was right behind us and we heard a huge loud slam in the bathroom. All of us were really freaked out just sitting there not knowing what to do. The candles started flickering. There was so much tension in the room. I have never felt anything like it. That is when my other stepsister screamed at the top of her lungs and told me to move. She saw a black hand approaching from behind me and was going to grab my face. Because she screamed so loud, my dad woke up and we heard him, so we said goodbye really quickly. I went upstairs really quick to call my dad down and say everything was fine. But after that night, we awoke something and a lot more things happened. Stay tuned for part four. This is part four of the Ouija board. So after we used the Ouija board, we definitely awoke something in the house. The energy downstairs was so intense that none of us could sleep down there. Because of this, me and my older stepsister slept upstairs for literally weeks. Remember the shadow of the hand that wrapped around my face in part three? Well, that hand didn't disappear. My stepmom said she saw it multiple times when she would go downstairs and change the laundry. It got to the point where her and my dad didn't even want to go downstairs. The cat would chase things that weren't even there. Doors would slam. Floorboards would creak at night. My dad would constantly see my cat chasing a figure and all you could see was the figure's spine. It would run on all fours. The hauntings got so bad that my dad decided that we needed to move out. Ever since then, nobody has lived in that house for longer than two months. Do you style your hair the same way every day? Well, there's an urban legend about a woman who always wore her hair in a bun. But for her, this habit would lead to something terrifying. This woman loved wearing her hair in a bun, but she might have taken it a bit too far. She didn't want to style her hair differently or even take out her bun to clean her hair. Whenever she took a shower, she would just wear a shower cap to make sure the water didn't mess up her bun. At night, she would sleep with a towel around her hair so the bun didn't move. After a while, she had to put hairspray in it to mask the smell. Then her scalp started feeling itchy, so she would put more hairspray in it. Even when the itching got intense she just applied more hairspray but her husband finally found out about how bad the situation had gotten when he woke up one day and his wife was still asleep he tried to wake her up but she wouldn't move she had died in the middle of the night the husband called the police fearing that something unusual might have happened but when her body was examined they finally took out her bun inside her hair they found something terrifying they found a huge spider had gotten into her hair made a nest and laid eggs when the baby spiders hatched they bit through her skull and ate her brain